ask you the question, why did you come to school in Oros, and then you can go on from there. Is that OK? Yes, that's OK. All right. Well, we're, I'm ready. Go for it. Yes. Right, Colin, can you tell me why you came to school in Oros when you were eight, please? <laughs> yes, uh, I actually started school in Oros when I was eight years old because Fradley School was only an infant school and uh, only a few pupils as well, about 20, I think, when yeah. I was there. And at eight years old, we were transferred to Oruru School. Uh, from there on, of course, it was a different life to, to Fradley School, yeah. where there were, I suppose, I don't know, somewhere in the region of 100 pupils in Oruru. And most of them I didn't even know. Uh, we had our own little gang from Fradley who walked every day to and from Oliver School yeah. uh, during the summer months across the fields um, and then during the winter very often we had to resort to the road uh, because of deep snow but it was always uh, an enjoyable walk back <laughs> not so much going but walking back and uh, we played all sorts of games, I suppose, on the way back. And, then, and as uh, the war was on at that time, it was very often military. Uh, we uh, pinched a bit of chalk from school and marked our sleeves with either sergeant stripes or something higher. Uh, and then uh, by the time I'd got home, it had been rubbed off, put on, rubbed off. And, as I was promoted along the way, and uh, I was then in trouble over my, my jacket. So I'll carry on. Right, so is there anything else you'd like to say about that, or would you want to move on to being uh, so... Hungry? Well, I could go on about uh, some of the other things that we got up to on the way home from school. Um, uh, we often, uh, during the summer months, or at least the apple picking months, uh, knew where trees overhung hedges into the fields that we walked through and uh, we were very clever at, at if there weren't any windfalls certainly making some and on one occasion uh, it became really serious when uh, one of our gang decided there were no windfalls someone else had beaten us to it and decided to make some with a with a brick that didn't hit the tree, went straight through and landed in a greenhouse behind it. Um, apparently taking off most of the grapes inside the greenhouse. So uh, it wasn't long before my mother knew about that and uh, it, I was in serious trouble that night, along with most of my friends as well. <laughs> Yes, I think that's as far as I'll go on that one. OK. Um, you did tell me about how you used to uh, drink out of the, the horse's water troughs as well during that time. Yes, um, we were very fortunate in Fradley of having a, a little paddock opposite us in, in which we uh, played cricket and football. The local farmer was very kind to let us use that. And of course, on Thursday days, we wouldn't even bother about thinking of going to a tap. There was a, a trough there that had been filled up in the morning for the cows, so put heads in that and, and drank that. We, no one ever seemed to uh, get any sort of disease from it at all. Thank you. OK, would you like to talk about school now and, and perhaps the teachers and, you know, who married whom and... Yes. Um, and being kind. Yes, when I um, went to Oliver School, uh, there was uh, an infants department, um, which of course we didn't go into from Fradley because we were all eight years old. Um, we went into Standard Two, uh, which at that time was uh, the teacher was Miss Mary Ward. Um, and then from then we were into Standard 3 and the teacher there was uh, Miss Megan Jones who eventually became Mrs Leavesley. Uh, standard 5 which uh, was uh, I didn't actually get into because I'd left before then. Uh, the teacher was Mr Mead. He was renowned for having a very whippy 
cane uh, and fortunately, with me not going in there, I, I didn't uh, have the experience of testing it. Uh, and then standard six was taken by the headmaster, Mr McKnight, uh, who was a very good headmaster. Very strict, but very fair, I always found. And a great deal of help to me particularly, I remember, um, he seemed to detect that there may be, with some of the pupils, worth keeping them on one side occasionally and teaching extra maths uh, in order to uh, get through an 11 plus or scholarship as it was called at that time examination. Uh, I didn't like the idea of these extra, extra tuition by the headmaster. Uh, but he certainly knew what he was doing and, and I was one of the lucky ones to actually uh, to get through that scholarship and, and go to King Edwards in Lidgefield. Uh, the first telephone. Let me take that out of here in case it rings. <laughs> Sorry about that. For the first time, I? Yeah. It's OK, carry on. Yeah. Uh, yes, my first experience of getting the cane from Mr McKnight wasn't very pleasant. Uh, it all occurred one afternoon and I suppose the first time you get the cane, it does stick in your memory for a long time. And we were reading a book called Treasure Island. Mr McKnight, for some reason, was taking our class that day and he, was, he read portions of it himself, and then asked various pupils to carry on and read. He'd obviously noticed that I was chatting to the lad next to me and decided to ask me to stand up and carry on. Well, I hadn't got a clue, to be honest, where, it, where we were, but I thought, well, better take a guess than none at all. So I stood up and started reading. And it was pretty obvious after two or three words and the, uh, the girls around me and, and boys sniggering knowing that I was in trouble, that I was way off the mark. He didn't hesitate, Mr McKnight. Russell and you, out to the front. So we went out to the front and I'd, I'd not had the cane before. So I didn't know quite what the experience was except for the older boys telling me what it felt like. So the uh, action was to hold out your hand and because it was not high enough, I remember he, t he tapped it underneath to get it higher and then whack and the, uh, the pain didn't actually happen immediately. Uh, it was as if everything went dead, including my mind, for a few seconds and then suddenly it went, it went home and... Uh, my first reaction was to look up and try not to cry and as I looked across to the door into the next classroom which had got two glazed panels I could see my sister sitting and she had seen all this happen. So I realised I was in trouble again when I got home at night. She certainly made sure she beat me home to tell Muller. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you want to talk about the, the football team there and some of the recreation that you got up to? Yes, yes. Well, at, at Oluwa School, of course, the playing field was just a, a field down at the back of the vicarage near to the canal. And there was nothing in those days like mark football pitches. We put a couple of coats down each end and had a kick around and it was well worn, there was very little grass on it anyway. Uh, but Mr McKnight was always uh, very keen on boys learning sport and uh, particularly cricket in this case. And we would have uh, a cricket match on Wednesday afternoon and he would often umpire this, this match and give us instruction on why we weren't hitting the ball properly and, and whether we should be bowling it in the correct way. Uh, he, was, he was excellent at that sort of thing. He always uh, had his pipe on. You, you could smell it around the school each day 
uh, he would be there early in the morning and uh, the pipe would be uh, uh, on the smoke all around everywhere. Um, but he, uh, one day on the, uh, whilst we were playing cricket, um, he, was, he was not paying too much attention after somebody had hit the ball way up towards the church hedge. The boy picked the ball up and went to throw it back to the wicketkeeper, misjudged it, and it took Mr McKnight's pipe clean out of his mouth. Fortunately, he didn't break his glasses because he did wear glasses. But he uh, everywhere went silent. Uh, they were th everyone thought we're in trouble here. Uh, but he just turned round to the boy and said, it's all right, it was an accident. And that's the sort of man he was. He was very good, very good headmaster. Lovely, thank you. Uh, do you want to talk about the village dances where, you know, you, the boys stood around and the girls stood around? <laughs> yes, well, of course, when we were older and uh, got into our teenage years, um, dances were held in what was known as the Oddfellas Hall in those days, and uh, it was always a band, not, not the disco-type music that we have now. Uh, often Roy Norton and his band, which I think was three-piece probably, a, a drummer, a saxophone and pianist probably. And uh, boys like us from Fradley walked down uh, to the village and uh, went into the dance hall. Uh, but it was pretty obvious that unless you could dance, we stood like wallflowers all the way around the outside. And, and girls seemed to dance with one another. They probably wouldn't have accepted dancing with us anyway. <laughs> and that now leads onto the bull's head. Sorry? So that now leads onto the bull's head. Oh, the bull's, bull's head. head, yes, yes. Please. And, of course, in uh, teenage uh, years, it was always uh, how we could get a drink before we were 18 years old. Uh, but it was pretty obvious in the bull's head we were known... Uh, by the proprietor and we'd got very little chance but I remember my first drink came through someone else older than me managing to buy it and uh, bringing it outside in fact so that I could drink it uh, but unfortunately I was spotted and uh, the next time my father went into the pub he was told all about it and so uh, another problem for me when I got home. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think. Is that sufficient? Uh, well, uh, cubs, just, do you mind? Cubs, yeah, cubs would be good. If, if you yeah. could tell us sort of um, where the cubs was held, who who else who ran it yes. for you, and the sort of things you used to do would be great. Yes, Sorry, that's done. Yes, the uh, cubs. Uh, I was invited to join the cubs when I was about nine years old after coming to all over school, and. Uh, because most of the men in the village and in Fradley village had uh, been called up into the forces. The vicar, the Reverend Hugh Hodge, uh, decided that he would uh, be the scoutmaster and the cubs were run by uh, a teacher from the school, uh, Miss Mary Ward. These were held at the vicarage, the meetings uh, held uh, one night a week at the vicarage and I remember mother used to allow me after I'd got home from school, walked home from school, to use my dad's bicycle to ride back into all of us to, uh, to go to Cubs. And there were a group of about a dozen uh, boys of that age joined the Cubs and during the summer months we held the meetings out on the lawn at the rear of the vicarage and during the winter, we were allowed one room within the, the vicarage on the first floor, I think, uh, which was also used by the scouts and guides. So we were able to decorate this with various uh, badges and flags and things. Um, during some of the uh, summer months, we were given projects to do, often down by the river, by the shallows. Uh, or um, chasing around the village to find various objects. <laughs> if you could paint a picture of what the village 
what all of us was like then compared to how it is now. Yes. Can you remember, sort of, in terms of uh, farms and sparsity of houses and numbers of people? Yes, and so? oh, yes, all of us. It's not so familiar to me, of course, as Franklin, yeah. because in the lab, but <clears throat> we used to uh, come down to Oriwas for things like having bo boots resold uh, to get uh, an accumulator recharged for the radio. Uh, Fradley had very little at all apart from a grocer's shop which was also the post office so we relied so much on Oriwas and most weeks I would be sent down here by mother to collect something or get my boots repaired. Uh, I also used to come with uh, farmers. Uh, they had to bring corn to the mill. Uh, so this was all horse-drawn, of course, at the time, and I enjoyed the ride down and back. Um, the horses were brought to the forge for reshoeing uh, in the forge on Main Street at the bottom of Kentsbridge. Um, and uh, just trying to think what else, there was something else down there, sorry about that, there was something else we used to come to occasionally. Oh, we chip shop, of course, eventually, not not during the war years, but afterwards. Um, Bill Simpson had a chip shop in the little shop near to Kentsbridge. That's, the shop's still there, but not used as a shop now, unfortunately. Uh, all of us itself, to me, was quite big with coming from Fratley, and of course the main street was more or less as it is now. Uh, the increase in the houses in all of us has generally speaking been taken up in fields. Well, like Walkfield, of course, we walked across that every day to and from school and uh, now it's half of it is taken up by, by housing. Uh, we, uh, because at school we uh, didn't have uh, spare rooms in any way, when we had a visit by the dentist, although the initial inspection was taken in Mr McKnight's office, uh, that was not appropriate for extracting teeth or filling them. So a room in the village hall, in the Oddfellas Hall, was used. And this was quite terrifying, I found, because you were sent down from the school you walked all the way down Main Street, uh, wondering what the dentist was going to do when you got there, and then sat in the main hall on a few chairs, waiting for your call. And you could hear this thing of a drill going, of course, which was a treadle machine, actually. The, uh, the dentist, who appeared to be the same man every year through my uh, schooling, whichever school I was at, he was the same chap, He'd had some sort of war experience in the First World War, which gave him the shakes, and we called him Shaky. And uh, to have the mirror rattling around <laughs> your teeth at the time, uh, wasn't, wasn't, it didn't uh, give you much confidence, you know. Uh, but he, he seemed to manage the job somehow. And, uh, and then the walk back up Main Street was obviously more pleasant than walking down it. <laughs> <laughs> about the bug nurse <laughs> the, uh, we used to have a, a nurse call at the school uh, about two or three times a year to inspect hair uh, often people got nits in those days uh, I was fortunate I didn't have much hair then uh, about as much as I've got now I suppose <laughs> but uh, so I, I didn't uh, get nits uh, but all the girls were instructed to tell the mothers that they must uh, wash their hair with certain soaps and uh, had these nit combs and but this uh, uh, bug nurse as we christened her uh, when she came to the school. Uh, she was a very severe lady and didn't hesitate in giving the air a good pull and uh, uh, push around and uh, get and talk to you in a very abrupt manner. So I think most people 
uh, made sure that the mothers did uh, wash their hair in the carbolic soap or whatever it is so that we didn't have so much trouble with it. Very good. Thank yeah. You very Is there anything good. else you want to add? Well, well, we got the. Um, I know you were. Well, we've gone through yeah. the, the yeah. nurse, the uh, the dentist. The dentist. They were the the worst bits. Do you remember those. any particular shops in the village, or did you not? I know you mentioned the the. Uh, no, we did. We didn't. Uh, we didn't really use shops in in all of us. We apart from having to go to Hearts, of course, for the accumulator batteries to be recharged, and and the cobbler to get a few more studs in her boots. I've heard that there was a bit of friction between Ulrey Wass and Fradley children. Did you, can you tell me something about that? Uh, yes, the, the, uh, because we were a small gang of children from Fradley in a, a much bigger school in all of us, we were obviously at a disadvantage uh, when, the, and there was rivalry obviously uh, with children. I was fortunate that I'd got one or two friends in all of us within the school who were very nice children, but there was always an odd one that you had to really be very careful in what you said and what you did. And this uh, would eventually, if it spilled over, uh, turn into a fight. In the playground, of course, uh, Mr McKnight soon stopped that. And uh, but it, it could boil over after school, and because we uh, our way home was through Walkfield, I found that was the quickest way of getting away. If you could get into Walkfield without being captured, I was well on the way towards home. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Is there anything else that you can think of that you want to? Uh... Uh, You'd probably think of a dozen things when we've gone, but just... <laughs> no, it's surprising how things do come to your yeah. mind afterwards, but... Yeah. Uh, no, and I think after, you see, after that period, of course, I went to uh, King Edward, so I had very little to do with all of us yeah. until uh, eventually left school and then uh, started to play uh, cricket and... Uh, football a bit more seriously and all of us had got a football team before Fradley had even thought of one uh, and several of the Fradley boys played for all of us football team until the Fradley team was formed in 1954. Uh, cricket wise I was never much good at so I was only called upon if they were short in the all of us second team uh, but we did have quite a good Orm Cup team in Fradley and uh, we did we, we won it at least once when I was playing uh, in the team it was good fun that was that was a good rivalry uh, game the the Orm Cup uh, as it as it still is of course and how long have you been living in in, in all of us as an adult S oh 15 years since I've been retired we moved here yeah because right. uh, from Fradley I was then married after National Service, and then we moved Shenston Way because my wife lived in Shenston, and then we came back mm -hmm. to Litchfield, and then eventually to retire in all of us. Going back to when you were at school, Colin, you told me, that, um, just reading my notes, that Mr McKnight and his wife used to walk to Fradley to see yes, how you were Yes, indeed, on. yes. Yes, after I'd been fortunate enough to uh, pass the scholarship and go to at the grammar school in Litchfield. Each summer, uh, Mr and Mrs McKnight walked to Fradley during the summer holiday uh, and called on me uh, and he always expected to see my school report. Uh, he was not the sort of teacher who, once gone from the school, you have forgotten. Uh, he would uh, remember you the whole of the time and and he was very helpful in some cases where he read the report and thought well this is not quite good enough for a lad like him and uh, really reinforced what the master at the grammar school had written to help me along. Yeah. Thank you. That's a lovely story. It's a lovely story yeah. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay shall we we'll leave it there then? Yes thank okay. you very much.